Good morning. My name is Emily Henderson. I had the honor and the great privilege of leading this year's mission team. Ephesians 6, 7 says, Work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. And this was our theme this week. We had 18 youth that went on this trip. We had two college students. And we had 14 of us that were beyond college age. <laughs> Isn't that right, Jim the Wizard? As Jim Beverly has now been dubbed. Several of our youth now, and some of the adults have nicknames. You just need to ask them about that. But I want to start with a huge thank you to you all, our church, who supported us with your prayers and your finances to help us go and be the hands and feet of Christ. Now, I've been driving for since I was 16 in the United States, and I thought I knew the rules of the road. But things are a little different in New Jersey. <laughs> Other than the massive amount of cars that move through the roads there, I learned that you can't make a left turn off of a main road. You have to go through what's called a jug handle. Didn't know what that was and had to learn that. You're not allowed to pump gas in New Jersey. I'm good with that. And I'm still not sure what it meant by delayed green at the stoplight because it changed at the different stoplights. You never knew which, whether you were stopping in or you were waiting for the, anyway, it, it just was a little crazy. But we survived it and we got through it. I learned a lot of other things along the way too. I learned about the strength and the faith, the character, the heart, the enthusiasm that this group has shown to one another as well as to the families that we have served. We worked on two different sites with a group of 34 people. There's not a whole lot of work to do in one place when you can actually get into the building and or do the work. So they split us up. One of our sites was about a football field length distance from the sound at the Atlantic Ocean in the north part uh, near Union Beach in a community called the Highlands. The homeowner, Marie, is a lovely lady who had been dealing with a tremendous amount of adversity over the last year, not just during the hurricane. The water level crested on her property at eight feet. Um, she had lots of damage to her home and her detached garage. There was a massive amount of yard work. What you're seeing is the good part. We painted the exterior. We had to deconstruct the one good thing that the contractor had done, which was the sheetrock, because you can't um, use wiring that has had salt water in it, and he had not changed that out. He had not gotten permits either. So also this part of our mission team built a lifeguard stand um, for the public beach in the Highlands community to help keep them safe. The other site was in a town called Keensburg, which is next to Union Beach where there was so much damage. The homeowner was Joe and he fit the stereotypical Hollywood version of a New Jersey person. He was a bit gruff and tough. He was loud and had a rather colorful vocabulary but he also had a really big heart. His home had roof damage, which of course caused ceiling damage. Um, one of the rooms was flooded, water had come into that room, and then the garage was flooded. The group that worked on that site was rewarded every day with donuts. <laughs> we also dealt with rain and thunderstorms, which delayed a lot of the outside work. We had to learn to use a lot of patience. It was very hot and very humid, very much like we've had here in the last several weeks. We were, though, rewarded by being allowed to um, have some of the best accommodations I've ever been in on a mission team, 
We stayed in a Roman Catholic college, very small area. We had air conditioning this year, which is a wonderful benefit. Um, but the college is surrounded now by the third largest Hasidic Jewish community in the world. Um, they were Jewish, not Amish. Um, but we had a very interesting cultural experience this week. The theme for the week um, was foundation. Our nightly devotions covered topics such as building character, faith, trust, adversity, and obedience. Our nightly praise and worship with the team effort group of leaders and three other churches was an amazing thing. But our small group with our church group was also led by our youth who did a tremendous job. I saw eagerness of our team members to put their heart and soul into everything that they did. I saw team members open their heart to take in what God has to offer. I saw team members determined to make a difference for a widow, a family, and a community. I saw the hands and feet of Christ through this team that God put together for his purpose. We're going to share with you some of our pictures of our experience that we had along with the presentations from several of our folks on the team. Thank you. Hey guys. <laughs> um, so that was our work and stuff. Um, I was at the site with Marie, the lady that was like really tiny <laughs> and she's precious. And um, her story is really amazing because, okay, so I'm out of breath from walking up all this. Anyways, <laughs> um, so Marie, she, um, she's been through a lot because she lost her husband three months before this hurricane hit, so she also lost partially, mainly her house, too, if you want to go that far to say that. So, and then when they were trying to get it fixed, the contractor, he didn't do anything right, but he kept asking for money. So she, obviously she wanted to get her house fixed, so she kept giving him money, thinking that he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. But when my grandpa went inside to do um, the inside work, like the sheet, or the sheetrock was done good to cover up everything else that was done completely wrong on the inside, which was like um, the insulation was put in like backwards in some places and the wires, as Emily said, had been reused. So that's gonna have to all get un um, like redone, but we can't do that because we didn't have enough time. But, so the yard work. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't really, I, I did my first weed whacking job ever. I've never weed whacked before, <laughs> but I got to. <laughs> and it was, I was scared though. But um, uh, I, like, I don't know how to start. We, she had like a backyard, like a normal backyard we have at our houses. And then she had like a backyard, like where the boat was and that car was. And um, so I started in the back because me and a couple others were in pants. And so like the grass was really high when you first got there like the first day. So they didn't know like what was out there, like snakes, feral cats, apparently, like <laughs> all kinds of like sharp objects too. So it was, it was kind of dangerous at first. But, but we went in and the first thing this team effort guy had me do was bust the windshield out of that car. And um, it was really funny because he was like, I just hate busting the windshield out. But he was like, just go ahead and do it. And like, I'm used to like seeing it in movies where the, the, the windshield just like busts into a million pieces and it's gone. But um, no, it took me like several tries with like this big, huge cinder block, like chucking it at this like window. And it was really like flexible. I didn't realize that windshields were so like bendable. You can like roll them up. <laughs> but uh, we took out like, it was her husband's car, by the way. So um, we took out a little like gear shaft and got some like memories for her. <coughs> and then like on the side, she had this like shed in the back of her yard and on each side there was like little walkways and this one side had like a bunch of like trash, I guess it had gotten like thrown in there from like the hurricane and, like floated in there. And it was like overgrown, so it was like a bunch of like little mini trees and there was like 
a shower in there and tires were like everywhere and um so Steve was working on that part that had like the patio I don't know if it was in the picture but it was like this huge patio that was like rotten and we needed to get it out so we could weed whack and take care of the lawn care some more so he was working on that and then um other people were painting and so we started like Kevin and I started like pulling out all these like trees and it was so difficult because like their roots like went all the way down in the ground and like it was really hard to pull up and so all during this work Marie um Marie and a couple like of us had gotten like really close to her and like we ended up I ended up getting her number like her email and stuff and she she's like a sign to me like like a message from God because I don't know if I would have been the same way to like handle that the same way she did because it was so crazy like to think that she like everyone left her like she was alone like she had her brother but like she like didn't have anyone there to support her and her contractor left her he was her friend and he left her and like I don't know it's it's hard to like explain how like her story like she was always crying about how happy she was that we were there and all we were doing was yard work we weren't even helping her house really we painted it but we were taking care of her yard and she acted like we were like saving her from like an like a deathly accident or something like she acted so grateful just for us to pull some weeds up and so some of us we got her a gift and it was like a picture frame with like little notes on it for her to show that we cared and that we were always going to be there and keep in touch and we got her a candle to like talk about the light of Christ and that because she lost her faith when everyone left her, and I don't blame her. But um, so we gave her a candle to like show that the light of Christ is always there, and that He will continue to be there, and that we will continue to be there. And um, some people got her flowers to show like new beginnings and stuff. And speaking of new beginnings, so I noticed that like at the site, I saw these white butterflies, and I'm not talking like you know dirty white. They were like pure white. Like I've never seen a butterfly like as white as this paper. And um, they were like just, I only saw them just at her house. I didn't see them anywhere else in New Jersey and in New York. I never saw them anywhere else. And I was like, why are all these butterflies here? And I remembered, I learned a little while back, a couple years ago, that butterflies mean new beginnings and hope. And I was like, that's crazy because this is her house and this is her new beginning and we're helping her. And it was just really cool to see that. And like, um, sometimes it would just get like so hot and like we would just want to stop working and take water breaks and like it would get ridiculously hot like you wanted to just like sit down and like drink water <laughs> and um but like somehow it's like somehow there would always be like a breeze that would just kind of come through and like refresh you and then you'd be like okay I, I want to get back to work and keep working and I don't know what it was I guess it was God because I mean there was times we were like hauling like big pieces of metal out but it was like we still had the strength to do it. Like after day after day after day, we still did it. And it was so crazy. Like the team, I've never seen the team work this hard. Like, I mean, we work hard every single time, but like this is like things that like usually adults pick up. Like I've never had to pick up like a piece of a furnace that weighed like more than I did. And <laughs> I ended up picking up some of it and it was just, the work was heavier than I thought it would be. Like it was more work than it looked like. But um, I don't know, I guess like, we just bonded, the team, and with Marie, we all bonded, and it just didn't seem as bad, and it wasn't bad at all, actually. I really enjoyed it, um, and I wish we could maybe go back and see her again sometime, but <laughs> it'd be kind of hard. But, um, yeah, so I guess it's all I have to really say. <laughs> so. everyone. Um, my name is Desi Aya, but before I give my experience, I made a promise to Wade Allen that I would let everyone know that he couldn't be here today, but he really wanted to talk and he had a great time on the mission trip with everyone. Um, so this is my first mission trip and I had a wonderful time. I got to do lots of things I never thought I would ever have to and I got the experience to work at both of the work sites. And at Joe's house, I was only there for like one afternoon, but I got to get up on the roof and tear off boards. I almost fell through the roof one time because I was putting all I had into getting this nail up and it just popped up all of a sudden and 
I, there was a hole in front of me, but I was okay. I balanced myself. I had to carry a kayak in the pouring rain. I got soaking wet, and I got to paint the outside of a house. And I also had to move parts of, like, her bathtub. It was out in her yard. I had to move parts of that. I had to move radiators. But one of the things that really affected me was the chapel services that Team Effort put on there, and we got to go to them every night. And the last one just it really hit me hard. Um, we talked about foundations and how, you know, you can build your foundation on the rock, which is the Lord, and if a storm comes your way, then you'll be okay, but you, other people build it on the sand, and when a storm comes, they break down, and they don't have anyone to lean on. And that last night, it just really hit me, like, that, you know, everyone encourages you to build your foundation on the Lord, and everyone wants to believe that their foundation is, but it, it just kind of hits you that it's really hard to be completely based on the Lord. It's really hard to always act selfless. It's, it's really hard to not do something that you know that the Lord wouldn't do. We had to pick Proverbs, and mine was about how your actions always seem innocent, but the Lord knows the truth, and it just hit me how it's so easy to convince yourself that in comparison to what other people do or comparison to like how other people live, that your life is on the rock, but when a storm comes and it's not really there, you're going to break down and you're going to have to rebuild everything. And I was just so grateful that I got to learn that before a big storm came and hit my life and I can go ahead and start building my foundation more on the rock now so that I'm prepared for that. And I just wanted to thank everyone in the congregation and everyone who helped set this trip up because it was a great experience and I can't wait to go back. And you have no idea how much this trip helped me and how much y'all raising money and praying for us just affected my life. And I wanted to thank everyone in the congregation. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as you can tell, I probably came back a little different than I came. Uh, you can thank Lynn Beck for that. Uh, I would like to uh, start uh, what, I, what I'm going to say with a Bible verse because I had to do a uh, devotion this week. And this verse just really, it just spoke to me. Uh, it's uh, James 2, verses 8 through 9. It says, if you really carry out the loyal law prescribed in the scripture, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that was... That's what everybody was trying to do down there. I mean, people down there, I could say I worked on the first site with Uncle Joe, who was, whoo, that guy. You can ask, anybody knows Connor Davis, he's kind of a very calm guy, and I saw him just, uh, he was driving him crazy. And, uh, <laughs> um, but really, they were great people. I mean, I can't say they, they told me that they weren't Christians, but still, we were there to do God's work. Um, one time I was sitting there and they, they said a couple of things and said, I loved when people watch people do my work for me. And I was just, I was just a little caught off guard, you know. We're sitting here doing volunteer work for somebody and they're just, they're just taking advantage of it. But still, I mean, even I talked to Alan Emily about it and then that's what they told me. They said, we are here for God's work. That's what we came to do, and that's what really spoke to me. And um, I, got the, I got the privilege to work at both sites. Uh, second, I mean, for the most thing, at the second site, Marie was a bit nicer. Uh, she was very appreciative. Um, but still, I was just, it was life-changing. There was, there was nothing like it. Uh, the team effort people, amazing. Uh, great people. They would do anything for you. All of them had great life stories each night. Uh, met a guy named Rusty who was from Atlanta, and uh, he grew up in the projects. He's a white guy, big white guy, and he was, he was a drug dealer. I mean, he was telling us his life story. He grew up, and I was just it just touched my life. And then the last night we had chapel, uh, it's just how much love they showed us. Just, I was lost for words. Everybody there, even from other youth groups, uh, was here comforting people, you know. We're here for you. God is here for you. God has your life. And they were just, I don't know. And for all the stuff that I've been through, and uh, 
the life storms. It was it was amazing. I can't. I want to thank all y'all for helping us get through this trip and sending us and raising money. Cause it has for sure changed my life. Thank you. So I'm not sure how I feel about following off following up after all the kids. I'm about to cry myself. Um, so truly you can see that God's really worked in this team. Um, my name is Rebecca Garcia and I had the opportunity and privilege to travel to New Jersey with some of the best youth I know. This is not my first missions trip, but it was my first trip with this group and it's amazing what these teens can do and how willing they are to work hard, sweat, and serve people they don't know. You all would be very proud of each person that went on this trip. One of the first days of the trip, Al Henderson asked everyone to come up with a proverb and meditate on it throughout the week. I know one of my biggest shortcomings is patience, but the proverb that stuck with me was not along those lines. I ended up choosing Proverbs 27:19, and it took a while for me to realize why I chose this verse. It reads, as water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. As we worked throughout the week, I thought about the two different sites that our group was working at and the differences in the houses, the amount of destructions, and the families that lived within them. I thought about the proverb that I chose and began thinking, what if people judged our lives by the appearance of our houses? The first house seemed pretty put together with a few cracks and leaks here and there, no different from the ups and downs that each of us experience in our spiritual lives. The second house was in more disrepair. The yard, work, the yard hadn't been mowed since the hurricane, and the repairs on the house were incomplete and incorrectly done. This was truly a hurricane in the life, and one's life. As we got to know the owners of the homes, I began to realize that the lives of the people within the homes didn't reflect their relationship with or faith in God. Aren't we glad that we aren't judged by the appearance of our house, how clean our rooms are, how often we dust, or how often we wax our cars? Instead, we are only judged by our lives that reflect the true desires of our hearts. What do people see when they look at you, your life? Do they see a heart of love for Jesus Christ? This missions trip enabled the team to allow the love of Christ to pour out of our hearts and through each person's hard work and into the lives of those we served. I spent most of my time working at Uncle Joe's house with family members coming and going. It seemed that the family was able to enjoy some leisures that many other families cannot. It didn't take long to realize that this family didn't have a firm foundation in Christ, and we were often referred to as those Christians. At times, it was difficult to work there because a contractor and Uncle Joe were always willing to give advice, and it usually criticized something we were doing. I found myself frustrated with the situation and not completely understanding how this site was selected for us to work at. It took the whole week for me to realize that maybe God's plan wasn't necessarily for us to help this family because of financial need or overwhelming devastation to their property, but instead, maybe it was God's plan for us to share the light of Christ with the family that was living in darkness. God accomplished this plan in many ways, from the people that were able to bite their tongues when unnecessary criticism came their way, team members stepping out of their comfort zones and onto a second-story roof, and people trying things they've never done before. Thank you to everyone for your support, both financially and through prayers. Although you don't know the names of the people that we were able to serve, you helped share, shed the light of Christ in both those who served and those of us that served. Thank you. I'm not going to preach, I promise. Um, okay, I'm Virginia Washburn. And um, as we were talking earlier, our um, theme for the week was building a strong foundation. And again, I want to read Luke 6, 46, 49. Um, but why do you call me Lord and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them, I will show you 
whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundations on the rock. And when the flood rose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Okay, so, um, as you heard a little bit about Marie's story, um, her husband had died, and then the hurricane came, and um, she was still very raw in, with her loss of her husband. Um, she was very sad, she was depressed, and um, you know she didn't feel like she had anything. Um, everything she had was lost in the storm. Um, she um, you know, hired this contractor to start the repairs. Unfortunately, he did the shoddy work. He um, you know, didn't do the permits. He didn't complete the work, and he took her money and ran. Um, she became even more depressed, and she didn't trust anyone. He destroyed her trust. Uh, now, without any money, she didn't know if she would ever get to live in her house again, and she lost hope. When we arrived, this sad, depressed, crying woman told us her story. She told us she grew up Roman Catholic. She had not been to church in a long time, and through all of this, she had lost her faith. Trust, hope, and faith, three words so powerful. Her home had a solid foundation, but the inside was a total mess, just like Marie was. We got busy cleaning up the debris and overgrowth in her yard. Um, that had to be done just to get to the house because some of the overgrowth was as tall as some of us. Um, others in our group were busy inside removing sheetrock to see what was going to need to be redone by the contractor who took her money. Um, we all worked hard and diligently. She was there each day and watched us completely overwhelmed our light was shining bright. She could see our love for God in her. She kept saying over and over how much she appreciated it and how thankful she was. We started to see her smile. We all gave her lots of hugs. We could see she trusted us. She had hope, and most of all, she talked about faith and how she missed going to church. Um, in a few minutes, we're going to sing a song, My Hope is Built, and um, the chorus, um, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. And Marie was definitely in sinking sand. She you know, didn't feel like she had anywhere to go or anybody to turn to. Um, on the last day we were there, um, I got up that morning and I got dressed and I just happened to put on this t-shirt and on the front of it, it said um, restore and it was Isaiah 58, 12, and it showed a tree, and half of the tree had leaves on it, and half of it was dead. And um, that's kind of how Marie was. She was just going through life and going through the motions and, you know, just, um, just trying to get through every day. Um, and that verse is uh, Isaiah 58, 12. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. And so the last thing that I want to say is when we um, come up with a design of our t-shirt this year, um, the three words were rebuild, renew, and restore. And I feel like for Marie, we rebuilt her trust we renewed her hope and we restored her faith. And she told me uh, on the last day that she um, you know, felt so much better after we had been there and that she actually was thinking about getting back into the church and that she, you know, her faith had been restored. And um, she was an amazing lady and um, it was an awesome experience. <laughs>